Now we are going to talk about causes of death after acute coronary occlusion. We have discussed in detail in our last lecture the acute coronary occlusion or acute myocardial infarction or heart attack. Now the first cause we are going to discuss today in this lecture is the decreased cardiac output that is due to systolic stretch and cardiogenic shock. So we are basically going to dis discuss decreased cardiac output that is mainly due to systolic stretch and cardiogenic shock. Now what happens after what happens after myocardial infarction or heart attack is that some portion of the heart some muscles of the heart become non-functional suppose for example this portion this portion of the heart muscle these muscles in the heart they are not receiving enough blood due to myocardial infarction or acute acute coronary occlusion or formation of thrombus due to atherosclerosis in this coronary artery because we have discussed previously that there are two main arteries which are supplying blood to the heart one is the right coronary artery which is supplying blood to the right side of the heart and another is left coronary artery which is basically supplying blood to mostly left portion of the heart now suppose for example this right coronary artery has developed uh, a thrombus and blood supply has decreased and a patient has developed acute coronary syndrome or uh, acute myocardial infarction or simply heart attack now what will happen is that this portion of the heart the muscles in this portion of the heart it will become non-functional they will become non-functional or the muscle cells will die now the rest of the heart is normal but this small amount of uh, heart this small portion of the heart it is non-functional either because the cells in the muscles are not receiving enough oxygen and nutrients or the cells in this portion of the heart has died now when the other portions or the other muscles of the heart starts contracting what happens is that other muscles the other portions the ventricular uh, atria and ventricles they contract the blood and the blood starts moving out but this portion of the heart this portion of the heart it bulges outward it bulges outward Now this bulging out of this portion of the heart it is known as the systolic stretch. Now it is known as the systolic stretch and this is the main problem due to which decreased cardiac output occurs. This is the main problem due to which decreased cardiac output occurs because this area this portion of the heart is not only going out but it is also decreasing the force it is also dissipating or decreasing the force with which the heart is contracting because the force is wasted over here so it is not contributing to contracting rather it is also wasting the force of these normal muscles so what happens that the cardiac output the amount of blood that the heart uh, pumps every minute decreases the cardiac output decreases now when the cardiac output decreases the, there is peripheral ischemia peripheral because the heart is responsible for supplying oxygen and other nutrients and blood to all portions of the human body but when it when the heart itself has uh, become uh, damaged and the heart itself is not able to pump properly so it will not be able to pump normal amount of blood due to which the peripheral portions of the human body will not be able to receive proper amount of oxygen or blood due to which peripheral ischemia will occur and when the cardiac output falls when the cardiac output decreases due to damage to the heart this is known as cardiogenic shock this is known as cardio genic shock 
Now, among the causes of death after acute coronary occlusion, one of the most common causes is decreased cardiac output and this decreased cardiac output it is mostly due to the systolic stretch what occurs what happens in the systolic stretch is while the other portions of the heart are contracting this portion of the heart which has been damaged because the blood supply to this has been blocked this damaged portion is moving out it is moving out in contraction of the heart or rather simultaneously uh, contracting with other muscles so this area it is like wasting the power of the other muscles as well it is wasting the force of the other uh, heart muscles as well and this condition is known as systolic stretch due to which the cardiac output of the heart decreases and when the cardiac output of the heart decreases the peripheral uh, uh, tissues of the human body will not be able to receive enough, enough amount of blood and it will develop peripheral ischemia and the peripheral ischemia due to this uh, condition is known as cardiogenic shock because the blood pressure of the uh, uh, body the blood pressure of that person will also falls so uh, he will a uh, person will develop the patient will develop shock and that shock is due to the heart due to damage of the heart so it is known as cardiogenic shock now when will this cardiogenic shock develops how much damage how much damage should occur in the heart so that uh, cardiogenic shock will occur so normally if 40% of the heart muscles if 40% of the total heart muscles are damaged then the the chances of cardiogenic shock or the the chances of death due to decreased cardiac output are very much high now how many people how many people who developed cardiogenic shock will die so cardiogenic shock will occur when around 40% of the heart muscles have been damaged and once this damage has occurred once cardiogenic shock has been developed around 85% patient around 85% patients will ultimately die due to this condition so uh, around uh, about the causes of death after acute coronary coronary occlusion one of the most common causes is decreased cardiac output and decreased cardiac output is due to the systolic stretch now what is systolic stretch because the systolic stretch is just due to the non functional area of the heart muscles which is because uh, the, this portion of the heart is not receiving enough blood because the vessel that is supplying blood to this portion has been blocked due to thrombus due to acute coronary occlusion due to myocardial infarction due to heart attack so this portion of the heart is not contributing contributing to enough force of contraction so while the other muscles are contracting this portion goes out and this portion when goes out this condition is known as systolic stretch and systolic stretch not only decreases the efficiency of the heart rather it also wastes the force of other normal muscles of the heart and when it is not able to contract forcefully and normally it leads to decreased cardiac output of the heart and decreased cardiac output of the heart leads to development of peripheral ischemia because the peripheral uh, tissues in the human body will not be able to receive normal amount of blood normal amount of oxygen normal amount of other nutrients which will lead to a condition that is known as cardiogenic shock also known as coronary shock or cardiac shock now one Uh, when will cardiogenic shock develops how much area of the heart muscles must be damaged uh, so that cardiogenic shock or the chances of cardiogenic shock will uh, increase so if the the, uh, the around 40% of the heart muscles are damaged if a large vessel of the heart has been occluded uh, and which occurs normally uh, due to uh, atherosclerosis process so if the 40% of the heart muscles have been occluded in myocardial infarction or due to acute coronary event only then the chances of cardiogenic shock are high and if you talk about how many patients will die if they develop cardiogenic shock so around uh, around 85% of patients they will uh, die due to cardiogenic shock once it has been developed now there are other causes of uh, death due to uh, due to acute coronary occlusion as well uh, they uh, the other causes basically include the damming of blood in the lungs which basically lead to respiratory 
uh, respiratory distress and some other causes include the rupture of the cardiac uh, muscles and we are going to discuss uh, all of them one by one in our coming lectures so thanks a lot for watching the video